Hey everyone, welcome to another riveting, exciting edition of Practical Research Skills 3, the survey research course of your hopes and your dreams of amazing times. Uh, it is getting down the wire. It's, it's like it, soon it's going to be week seven and you will be done and it will be your last bachelor classes like ever, unless you do another bachelor's. But still, this is a huge achievement. So I will toast to you. You're almost done. Um, I am drinking a delicious green rose and mint tea. It's called Serenity, but I feel angry inside. No, I'm kidding. I feel so angry. I'm going to listen to Avril Lavigne. Okay, so come into the virtual classroom. My name is Rob, or cool teacher Rob, serving fresh looks and glamour. I, of course, I'll say that again. I, I'm not going to make any promises. Anyways, uh, today we are talking about getting your precious, precious data from Qualtrics. So, uh, not many of you are at this stage, but I think within a week you will be, or, or perhaps this weekend you'll meet the, the threshold of the required valid participants for your survey. So that is what we're going to be talking about today. We are talking about downloading your sweet, sweet, sweet data. And this is us. This is our data. We love data. So uh, the agenda for this quick, it's not quick, but this delicious class Sorry, this is turning into ASMR. God, uh, let's let's go it. Let's go into Qualtrics. This is the agenda. We're going to go into Qualtrics. Uh, I just spat all over my screen. Cool. Um, we'll make sense of it. We'll talk a little bit about the about the the coding and cleaning cleaning process. We are going to not do calculations today. I will refer you to some wonderful practical research skills two lessons because that is what you have learned in practical research skills two, and you might need a refresher. So that is a okay. I have some fun, wonderful videos for you to see. Let's get into the thicket of it. Let's go to Qualtrics. Where are we? Here we are. Okay. So let's close that. I was playing around. Let's. Okay. So. I will use my thesis data as a reference point, but here you are, you are in Qualtrics right now, and you are going to go to, uh, yeah, you're gonna go to your data analysis. Once you feel like you are done and hit that mark, it's time to download the data. So go to this data analysis tab right here, click that. And then you will see the ability to export and import. Pretty straightforward. We want to export our data, of course. We want to export it as an Excel file. Now, this is the this is important to know. We have two different options here. We have we can download our fields as numeric values, or we can uh, we can download it as choice text. And what that means is that uh, when we download, so okay, you have scales and. Everyone in their survey has a scale of, you know, <coughs> I just joked on the fly, um, of disagree to agree. And when we download our text as uh, numeric, it will already code, uh, it will already code our responses as numbers. Now this is super handy because later we're going to be conducting correlations and this is so handy to have these already done as numbers. Now if we were going to choose the choice text option, this is what we would see. So instead of um, instead of numbers, we would see the response categories that we offered our respondents. So agree, neither agree, blah, 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 strongly agree, somewhat disagree. So if we look at this same question 50, when we look as um, um, when we chose numeric fields, then we'll see this is coded. Now this is very important. Please, 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 please pay attention. Go back to this tab, watch. This is so important. The way that you code things determines the numbers. Now, not all of the uh, responses that you're gonna see are not all of the agrees and you know, are going to be coded the same number. For many of you, you will know, you, yeah, you have, your scale has started at strongly agree and has the, yeah, uh, on, on the left-hand side, you have strongly agree and on the right-hand side, you have strongly disagree. Um, this will be coded, strongly agree will be then coded as one and strongly disagree will be coded as seven. 
And the reason why this is important is because that you're going to, if you don't pay attention to this, you're going to see some negative correlations as one decreases, the other in increases, and this will be a huge um, analytical issue or misinterpretation if you don't catch this. So if you, uh, let's look at this question in mm, uh, my survey that I did. So question 50, um, Ariana Grande, uh, where was it? Something, something inclusion. Okay. So here we have for this question, while watching the music video, I criticize the inclusion of the Samsung phone, strongly disagree on the left-hand side and strongly agree on the right-hand side. So when we go to the, um, yeah, when we go to our choice text, let's say, you know, for this, we see agree here, cell CV10. And if we go to the numeric, it will be coded as a six. If you have coding that is opposite, so strongly agree is here and strongly disagree is here, this will not be a six for you. This will be a three. So it will be, or two. Yeah, two. Um, it will be swapped. So please pay attention to that. That is huge. Now, uh, moving along, let's actually, <laughs> now that the, the, uh, the, the fire is put out, let's go and go back to our data analysis tab and let's export the data. So I would recommend downloading both file types just to refer back to. Now, before you click download, what you want to do, and this is quite important, click more options and click the uh, export viewing order data for randomized survey. If you don't click this, you will not see who, yeah, who saw what, who was randomly placed in what category. So please click this, then click download, and then let's open one of our surveys. So here we go. When we open up our surveys, we're gonna see a lot of crap that does not need to happen. So one of the first things that we need to do once we have opened up our Qualtrics in Excel is do some data cleaning. And the first step in data cleaning that we can address is columns that we do not need. We do not need approximate latitude and longitude. This is creepy. So delete that. Then we arrive to our consent question. Great. Um, you'll notice that people that do not consent will have nothing else further put in here, uh, most likely because you have a skip logic which booted them out of the survey. So it is nice to do is put a filter on this, make sure that your filters are on. There we go. Yeah, they should automatically be on. And then let's delete some rows. So let's use our filter to all the ones that do not consent, let's delete these gaffers. Delete. Now, if you were silly like my 26-year-old uh, self and did not force validation every question, then, um, yeah, you might have some, you might also have some blanks. Oh, this is, this kills me inside, guys. Oh, this, this, this is breaking my heart. Don't go break in my heart. So another thing we want to do is if we have some blanks because we forgot to force validate some questions, we have to remove responses. This is tedious, but that is the name of the game. Okay. This is looking pretty good. Next. Time first click. This is not relevant for me. First click. Nope. Let's remove some more columns. And then lastly, one of the other things that we want to do, of course, is to um, is to look through some of the funny business. So if you have any sort of questions that ask, like, you know, um, how many minutes do you exercise a day? It's always good to take a look at those questions, just because, as we know, sometimes. Um, people can put in some funny business. Now, going to my survey, I ask a question at some point in here. Ah, here we go. So I ask a question that says, on average, how many music videos on YouTube do you watch a day? If you watch one specific multiple times, please include the multiplier. So how many 
music videos on YouTube do you watch a day? So it's nice to sort. And we see that some people have answered they watch negative seven videos, negative five videos. We can use it. They watch six quin. I don't know that number. Um, like, you little bastards. So anyways, this is, this is why I will never have children because they're just not serious. No, I'm kidding. Uh, kind of kidding. Kind of serious. Anywho. Uh, so of course, these little jerks, we need to delete this silly answers because it is probably most likely that they did not take the rest of the survey seriously. So out they go. Goodbye to you. See you never, TTYN. Clear filters, cool. So, this is something groovy that we can start to look at. Oh, very cool. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. At the very end of your survey, you are going to see the display randomizer orders. And I think uh, for sake of ease, let's go to a, another group's survey that did that. Um, so, where are you? Well, I'll just go down and download it again. This is uh, Galena. Plune, Nella, and Freddy's survey. So I'm going to download their survey. Of course, I'm gonna click more options and I'm going to say export viewing order data for randomized surveys. <clears throat> Party time. Again, clear this stuff. Like, okay, so Qualtrics is pretty anonymous, but like the fact that they use like latitude and longitude is like not it's it's kind of creepy it's 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 kind of creepy but who am i to judge this wonderful program uh, okay uh so uh i think these are mostly practice questions that they have asked they're not practice questions but they've done some preview questions and maybe they've gotten some respondents high five you guys for getting some respondents so okay we already see that there are some blanks and this matters. So, of course, we want f at least 50 valid responses. Meaning that sometimes Qualtrics is a little bit misleading because right now we actually have uh, 16 valid responses. And in the... Uh, in the... Uh, um, yeah. Eh. Like Rumba in the uh, Qualtrics dashboard, it says that there are 22 recorded responses. So keep in mind that there can be some shenanigannery in here, some um, stupefaction, some bamboozlement, some buffoonery about. Uh, so what I mean when there are valid responses, I mean that we have cleansed the data and there are now actually only 16 valid responses. Okay, move it along. So, da, 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 oh, this is n also empty. Oh, hey, Lass. Okay, I lied. There is 15 valid responses. And that just sounded like I went through puberty. So at the very end of this wonderful data set, we will see the randomization order. So, Galena, you have presented some stimuli. So, of course, our filters are already in place. So we just want to filter on the ones and not the nuns. So these are the people that were placed in Galena's first stimuli. So we don't have enough responses to conduct a meaningful t-test yet, but for practice, let's say that we can. So what we would do, we'd filter on all the ones and then uh, let's say like we're looking at her stimuli and um, this question about confidence in their abilities to do ergonomic exercises. So I would copy and paste this and I would say, I just put in Glenn it. Condition one. Ugh. Let's try this again. I would copy and paste. Microsoft Excel does not really like when you like write in a cell 
after you've copied and pasted the information. It's just like, you know, you need to copy this again. Anyways, so here we go. And then of course we want to do the same mm -mm 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 for stimuli two. So we can put this back and claim the stimuli two. Shisha. Is, this is just like practical, practical research skills. It's all coming back to you now. It is all coming back to you now. Duh, here we have our second array of data. Glena condition two. Oh my gosh. Every time. It's like trying to mount in the maw in World of Warcraft. Okay, then we would plug in our t-test. And if you don't know how to do this, I will put some videos in. Okay, so, and then we do, yeah, our first rate of data, our second rate of data, we assume two, which is for conservative values, and we assume that there's unequal variance. So we know that at this very early moment, which this actually, there's just, there's just, there, it's, still, it's silly to do this, but it's a nice practice because there's just not enough responses, but, Initially, we can say that there is no difference um, in Galena's stimuli in which she is manipulated. The I think it's like a gain and loss frame. There's no effect of gain and loss frame on people's uh, confidence in their ability to do ergonomic exercises. Awesome. So that is pretty much how we want to go for that. Of course, if you want to do a correlation, you are free to do that as well. Uh, clear the where are you? Ha, ha, yes. So if we wanted to do where's your attitude? Ooh, I am confident. Uh, yeah, if we wanted to do a correlation, we of course could do that. And you all remember that fancy fun formula called Corel. So if there is a correlation between their attitudes towards ergonomic apps and their confidence in doing exercises? Let's find out. Ha, there's a negative correlation, but we need to see how they coded their responses. Um, this is not really a meaningful correlation. You are probably going to find not a lot of very interesting or significant results. This is just the factor of research. Um, yeah, as I mentioned before, and I'm a huge proponent of, you know, sometimes no results are still results. There is still meaning in things in which we don't see a pronounced effect. So please keep this in mind because the academic world sometimes suffers from this. Results need to be significant. They need to be really interesting because that's how we get published and that's how we get tenure. And this is my skepticism of the academic system and it uh, results sometimes in, in ethical uh, research and p-hacking and blah, 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 blah. Please keep this in mind. I think this is a nice attitude to have as you walk into your master's, um, a PhD, or just life in general. Anyways, this is, this is basically it. So, um, yeah, you have learned how to download Qualtrics, you, how to download Qualtrics, how to download your data into Qualtrics, doing some early cleaning, and then just, you know, I said I wouldn't do some calculations, but I just love it so much. I, I can't help it. I, I can't help it. <laughs> Anyways, that's my story. I hope that you guys have a beautiful, brilliant, wonderful day. And keep it up. Keep those surveys uh, popping. And we will see you soon. So have a fabulous night, morning, evening, or whenever you are watching this. Cheers, guys.